Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about learning to program. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, would you say that learning programming slash being a programmer is just a constant cycle of feeling like an imposter? For a while, uh, it is until you uh, until you start reaching your like sort of matching your own expectations I would say uh, it gets to a point where a fundamental thing is going to happen within you I would argue either you are going to be a self-conscious person and that's I think uh, not something that your profession is going to per se, it really comes down to how, how do you view yourself and what you are doing, it, your profession isn't going to help you with that. That is a more deeply rooted thing that's probably been going on for quite some time where a uh, classic one is some people are gracious losers and gracious winners, some people can't stand the thought of even competing because they're too self-conscious about that they might lose or things like that where we're all different in the way we handle be, being under the being under pressure if that makes sense or having something to lose so it's like how much risk are you willing to take on and how bold are you uh, so that's the one thing but the other thing is that there's uh, also a likelihood that the sensation of being an imposter goes away as you gain more skill but it really is what it comes down to. One of these two things might happen. So for those who have a quote-unquote normal development in their like view of themselves as software professionals, then I would say that's probably the case for most. Uh, as you gain more experience and you feel more confidence in that you can execute on tasks and so forth, the less likely you are to feel like you're an imposter that you don't really know what you're doing. Now I'm not gonna lie, it's it might be a little bit more difficult in the programmer's world because uh, on, uh, as opposed to a lot of other professions, this is a profession that requires you to learn new things and practically every day is a new set of challenges if that makes sense. It's a unique business in a sense because the it's as I, I like to think of it as a, a mix between uh, being you, a mix between being f being fearful. If we talk about the fear of uh, like your job, a mix between creating something that your peers feel good about, or like like you know elegant code or nice code or like well structured uh, code, and on being under constant pressure that you made a mistake because there's a logic to what you're doing. It's not one or the other. It's both. Like it, it, the thing that you made can be broken, and that doesn't feel good if you break production or something like that. And at the same time, you might you have a lot of emotions. You have a lot of different people judging you based on all kinds of things. Everything from how you write the thing to how you structure the problem to they might even not like you, etc., etc. There's all these factors that play in, and that's a daily thing. That's something you do absolutely every day and the people who usually are okay, like have a problem with that is as I said they usually they are usually people who are insecure in themselves you won't survive long as a software developer if you don't get to a point where you feel emotionally equipped with having your work under review basically every single day and the possibility of you breaking something every single day is there all the time and that's something very difficult for you in the beginning, because in the beginning you have this idea, you, you have this idea that you're going to be perfect, or that there's like that you have to produce and like you have to get things right. And the problem is that you're not equipped to do that in the beginning. No one is. And so, of course, if you're going to talk to people who have had the same process, because everybody fucks up. That's that's the thing, guys. There's no junior software developer who doesn't usually, at the very least, feel this way. And the way you get to be confident is, as I said, you go through it so many times until you don't really feel it anymore. Or, as I said, if you're the sort of person who have 
fairly unreasonable expectations on yourself or maybe you know you you don't have the necessary talent etc etc it really is complicated to say if you're ever going to get rid of that sensation but i know for a fact that some people do get rid of that sensation or mitigate it to a very large degree i'm one of them for example i also used to be very 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 uncomfortable and feel like I didn't know what I was doing. My first job was horrible. I had like stomach aches every single day, like every single, this, uh, literally every single day. And I was in an environment where like it was rough. It was rough as fuck. There was not much for me to get to um, to be happy about, apart from the fact that I was doing something that I really enjoyed. And after and I did that more than once. Trust me, that took years until you sort of got to a point where you realize that hey. All this hard work that I've been putting in has actually turned me into an individual where, like, I can solve almost all of these problems. Like, uh, it's still scary to, in some cases, to estimate, etc., etc. But I know that I can fix them because I've seen this. As I'd like to explain, guys, when you're learning something, it's like going through a line. It's a, it's basically a line where you face new and new challenges over and over, uh, and at some point you're going to start looping. And because something's going to repeat itself and then the better you get the more looping you're going to do until you basically stop in in a sense where you're doing more looping and just repeating things you already do have no you know or rehashes of the same thing as opposed to learning new things and when you get to that point the comfort will start setting in it's the you get confidence in your ability because you see the same consistent res- consistent results over and over as you execute the same tasks so i don't think that the like the, there is going to be a, a while of feeling like an imposter and feeling like you don't really know what you're doing and the only thing i can really tell you here is that uh, there's two perspectives that you have to keep with you in my opinion it's helped me at the very least a lot and i hope it's going to help you as well first and foremost remember that everybody starts somewhere you are still learning and that is not going to help you a lot but it is true it's it's like uh, imagine this if the if you're in an in a desert starving for like gallons or like liters and liters of water uh, by just I, I can give you a small cup of, uh, as a water and hopefully that's going to be enough so that you don't die from dehydration it's not going to be exactly like it's not going to make you feel a lot better but it's going to keep you alive and that is that you're still trying to become like a senior you're not a senior at this point or like uh, that hopefully that's going to give you some thought uh, thoughts on uh, something to ke- to sort of hold on to the second thing is that the only thing that happens as long as you keep on going is that you learn more and more and at some point i hope that you can sort of look back and do the thing that i as i said like as i did which is that after a while you start seeing that you're doing this thing over and over and although you may not I don't know be as perfect as you want to be and you're still making mistakes and that sucks you can still objectively see that you have been doing this now for quite a few years you are employable in others you are meeting expectations which is at the end of the day all that matters it doesn't actually matter how good you want to be it doesn't matter how good everybody else is the thing is, you are being paid a wage and you're doing the job in accordance with expectations. And when you realize that, it's it should st- hopefully stabilize you. It might not make you, which is the thing, like some people put on very high expectations on themselves and maybe you want to be even better. And that's great. Continue doing so because the hard work can just continue paying off. But at the very least allow yourself to be happy over the f- and like acknowledge in yourself the fact that yeah i might not feel all that confident but the results are actually there so what i want you to take away from this is that no you, i don't think that you have to worry so much that you're going to feel like an imposter forever it really comes down to how what expectations are you putting on yourself guys there are people who feel like they are supermodels who feel like think that they're fat there are like professional athletes who uh, like fall to body shaming even though they're like 
genetic marvels for the rest of us, like they're walking demigods, but to them that's not the case because from their perspective they have even higher expectations. So it's very hard for me to say that that's not you because it can be you and trust me, I mean, everybody has something and I myself have things like, you know, I want to be better and I feel self-conscious about etc etc. Everybody does. But on average, the more time you spend the less you're going to feel like an imposter because you're going to start seeing repetitions in your performance and the challenges that you're facing and as long as you overcome them over and over and over again you're not going to think about this as something that is difficult you're not going to feel self-conscious about it. it's just something you've already done or it's just something that you already sort of know how to do and you that grows confidence and that repetition is the thing that is important and the th two thoughts that I will on want to offer you is that number one being an imposter usually means that you're self-conscious about your performance and otherwise as you uh, the all you have to think about is that you're still learning the average junior software developer or someone who's like feels like an imposter like it's not this so common to have the imposter syndrome in the people who are like really really good at what they do but the thing is to get to that level you have to go through being inexperienced and that sucks it sucks being in inexperienced but it is it is the way forward and so allow you that time, allow yourself to be inexperienced for a little while and do the best you can. And the second part is, when you get to a point where you start looping and you start like repeating work and you start actually producing, allow yourself to be happy over the fact that although you might not be exactly the thing that you wanted to be, well, you're still producing you're still meeting the expectations of your companies or like your employers and so forth and you're making money from being a software developer that may not make you the world's best software developer but it makes you a real one so you don't have to think about yourself as an imposter if you can actually both walk the walk and talk the talk have a great day